Well, it couldn't be more appropriate, could it, Sabrina? That's all we need. Laurel knew it. We know it now. What a bust-in tune. And so to kick off the conversations, as we've established that uh, Roy knew the great man uh, longer than all of us and has had a very intimate part uh, of his life, uh, over to you, Roy. Um, share with us your thoughts about Laurel and your personal history with him and anything else comes to mind that you well, want to say. It, um, what can I say? I mean, I knew Laurel in 1964, something like this. Hmm. I was a very young guy. And at the time, he was uh, producing for um, a Melodist Blue Beat record. And he was looking for a young band to back him at the time. And all there was a black band in London those days was just playing soul music. So he came to a rehearsal hall and we found us and then he spoke to us and said, would you like to have a band who doesn't want to play no soul music? He wanted a band who can back him and play now this Latin sound and so on. We didn't want to do it at the beginning, but he tried to convince us and say, hey, it'd be good for you to try to play something, something else instead of playing ska music, whatever, you know. Anyway, he convinced and uh, we get acquainted with him and uh, we start to do a little concert with him and, you know, and uh, it goes on like this over the years. Then he gets to like us very much. Then he produced us, made the first record. He produced Jesse's Dame's Rise Again and two other songs, Because I Love You and Shotgun and some other stuff. And then it goes on and goes on. Then we used to back him all over England, but in the black circle, not with, not in the, uh, the white circle, you know? And he was the first black man who started to promote shows in big halls, as I said before, top rank, make-up ballroom, civic halls, and all, all over the place, Birmingham, all over, all over England, we used to, you know, travel around with him. And uh, we used to back him. We used to have over 45 minutes as a, as a you know, supporting act. I'd come out and do my 45 minutes show and then come the great Larry. After, one, after a while, he stopped doing that and just started concentrating on promotion. And goes on and we get acquainted with one a real good and, you know, got, you know, great, good relationship. And um, over the years, we just slowly slipped away and uh, we, we lost touch one another. But at the beginning, we was with him for about from 1965 65 until, nine, until 1960, 1966, 66, 1967, with Villarreal. Uh, we just disappeared. He went from London to, to Birmingham, then from Birmingham he went to Leicester, that's all. And I met him again in 19, uh, 2005 or 2006 in Switzerland. But he didn't remember me at the beginning. But I when I told him where I was, he said, oh, you're the guy you used to play the trombone. Oh, you're right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> but then, then, you know, so and he goes all right. But it's it not much to say because he was like a decent person. He was very funny. He was a great guy to work with, very direct. Tell us straight if it's not good, it's not good, and so on, you know. You know, uh, he was a great guy. What can I say about Larell? And without Larell, I would be here today because he wanted to discover me. Uh, you know, even he, he gave us the name, gave me the name Mr. Simmerip, and whatever. So I started carry on with it with the scene because uh, we got a very great song out there, and it's a pity nobody not doing it. He's the one who was behind me all the way. So I gotta give gratitude to Larell. Without Larell, I wouldn't be here today. So what can I say? It's a great guy. It's a great guy for everybody. Everybody, when I spoke, I went to Japan, even the promoter talk about him. Maybe part of the world you go where, where Laurel performed, only positive thing you hear from him. I never, never heard of Laurel, anybody said to Laurel that he was a stupid guy, he was a whatever, you know, he's just a normal, down to hurt, grounded person. That's all I can say. Laurel, in my eyes, is the godfather, and he would be a and he was a Jamaican, the first Jamaican icon. That was Laurel. It was long before Bob Marley, long before everybody else. In, when I was in Jamaica, uh, when he come with uh, Alton Ellis, with Alton and Eddie, and Larry Lakin, 
these are the two guys who was really getting down in Jamaica. Laurel got a lot of hits in the island. I mean, you know, those days would never be a hit under the European because they didn't know him. But it, the island people like Barbados, Trinidad, um, um, from uh, what's the other name? Of it? All the islands, anyway, the English speaking islands. With some like Mary Lee, a bartender, Barbara Kill Me Goat, and all those other stuff. That, that was a, was like a Bob Marley in Jamaica those days, you know? So that everybody should take the hat off for Laurel because Laurel is the one who carried the Jamaican music mixed with Latin all the way until he died. So he deserved to have the name the Godfather of Ska. Although at the beginning he didn't play the song, but he, he was producing it, but he was he wasn't playing it, you know? Until later on when we left the country, then it takes over. We went to come pioneer the music in middle Europe, it takes over. But you have to give them the credit. He is the Jamaican icon long before Bob Marley and all the others guys, and you know. Oh, yeah. That's all I can say about him. It's, it's, that is, what can I say? I would never give him five, I'd give him a hundred. <laughs> freedom. Oh, freedom.